Hello and happy Halloween folks. I've got this little sketch of a couple of trick-or-treaters, so I'm gonna go ahead and start painting right over this. And while I do that, I wanna continue the discussion that we started in part one about uh, the art industry and what it's like to work in the art industry and you know pieces of advice and whatnot. And uh, I wanna talk specifically this time about being a freelancer. Now, I am not uh, a good business person. My nature is more an, of an artist, obviously, and most of the time, most of the time, artists are not good business people. There are exceptions, but I am not one of those exceptions. So you can imagine that freelancing has been a real journey for me. And as the old cliche goes, you learn more from your failures than from your successes. And I've definitely had a few of those. So this is a story of probably my biggest failure and what I've learned from it. The story begins with a random email one day uh, popped up in my inbox. I didn't recognize the sender's address, but I did recognize the subject line. The subject line was simply the name of a famous Hollywood director. Now, for the sake of disclosure and privacy, I'm going to redact that person's name from this story. So let's just call this famous Hollywood director name redacted. So I get this email. The subject line is name redacted. And uh, I read the email. It's just one line. The email says, Hey, I bought your book. Are you in Toronto? So, you know, that's a nice email. It's fairly anonymous, but nice. So I reply, I said, with one line of my own. And I said, uh, thanks for thanks for the support. I'm glad you like the book. Uh, yes, I'm in Toronto. Uh, I live in the West End. So I hit send and got back to my work. Uh, then I got an email back from that person with another just one liner saying, great, then let's set up a meeting, which kind of put me off a bit because, you know, as a freelancer, you have clients reach out to you via email all the time. And uh, most of the time they, first of all, introduce themselves like, hi, my name is Mr. Smith and I'd like you to work on my children's book. Or, you know, I'm the director at a film studio and we're working on this project. We need concept art or whatever it is. You have something in the way of introduction. I, you know, this person gave me nothing. I, I didn't even know the person's name. And of course, the subject line was the famous Hollywood director's name, name redacted. But I didn't I didn't read into that. That was just something I thought maybe was there to entice me, like to grab my attention. So I ignored that. I thought it was like a cheap little trick. And I just didn't reply. So uh, a few days go by, nothing happens, and I completely forget about it. And then there comes an email from the same person, but this time I'm copied in with someone else. There's a third party in the email, and that uh, the sender says, um, talking to both of us, hey, Marco's going to set up a meeting with us uh, for the project. So at this point, I remember my wife was nearby, and uh, I told my wife, I'm like, Am I out of line in thinking this is really rude? Like someone just presuming that I'm going to go meet them without any introduction, using the line of a famous Hollywood director to get my attention. And my wife's like, no, that seems pretty presumptuous. I mean, you should just tell them politely that you have to you need to know something about their project first. So that's what that's what I did. I, I wrote back to both of them. And I just said something like, hi, you know, thank you for including me in your project. Um, but I, I have a busy schedule and I need to know at least something about the project to make sure that on a preliminary stage that I'm a good fit for it before we can agree to a meeting. And I sent that email. I thought it was a pretty politically correct way of telling someone off, basically. Not a minute goes by. Uh, my phone rings. I get my phone number was listed on my website at the time. So I guess they saw that um, my phone rings. I pick it up and the guy on the other end says, Hey, Marco, my name is blah, blah, blah. Hey, you know that email you got a few days ago with the subject line of name redacted? And I said, yes. And the person says, well, I'm that person's manager. And that was actually an email from this famous Hollywood director. Uh, at which point I immediately realized that this is no longer a joke. And I had just unwittingly told off a famous Hollywood director. So there's a moment of stunned silence as I lift my jaw up off the floor. And I think I apologize to the guy saying, oh, man, I, I never would have done that if I knew it was it was this person. Um, there was no introduction. And, and, you know, the person says, yes, yes. Uh, name redacted likes to be a little mysterious, which is still kind of funny. Um, anyway, this person really likes your work and wants to set up a meeting with you. Are you willing to meet like tomorrow night? And of course, me being now a little starstruck, to be honest, saying I say, uh, yeah, I'll move heaven and earth to meet you now. Let's uh, let's set it up. Where are you? And, you know, we set up a meeting in Toronto where I live. And that was that. So I first thing I did was I told my wife, I'm like, hey, you remember that email we wrote a few days ago? Yeah, it turns out we were missing some critical information. 
Anyway, we had a laugh over that. So fast forward to meeting. I walk in there and sure enough, in the flesh, there is name redacted, famous Hollywood director sitting there whose work you definitely know and whose work I personally enjoy. Um, so I was like I said, I was a little starstruck and that's kind of embarrassing to admit, but there it is. Um, so we shook hands. Everyone's all smiles. Um, the person who had called me, the business manager, was also in the room. So there was three of us. And uh, we just started talking about art. Um, Name Redacted did have my books. Actually, had two two of my books, which was super flattering. And the start of the meeting was cool. We talked about art. We talked about, you know, the mindsets of artists and, you know, different artists that we both like through the ages. Anyway, then the project at hand comes up. Name Redacted thinks that based on what's in my two books... Uh, that I would be a good fit for illustrating some key story moments from this script. And it was interesting because Name Redacted did not really want concept art, like in the traditional sense. Rather, they wanted finished illustrations, like illustrations that could be published in like a hardcover book or, or framed or something, which is different. Usually people want more sketchy concepts. No, they, this is very finished work. And because of that, they didn't want a team of artists working on it like you would in a concept art environment. They wanted one artist to get one artist's hand so all the finished work would look consistent. So they weren't hiring a studio. They were just looking for one artist. And that one artist was me. And that was super, super flattering. Like, I couldn't believe it. Which leads to the next wrinkle of this whole thing. Name Redacted would like all the work done traditionally. And okay, that's no problem. I mean, I'm trained traditionally. I can do that. But traditional media does take a lot longer than digital media, so this is shaping up to be a pretty big job. So, the first question I ask is, how many illustrations do you need? Name Redacted says, 12. Okay, so I do a quick little bit of mental math. 12 traditional illustrations. You know, I'd have to get the sketch approved first, then do the actual painting, and then make any revisions, which always takes longer with traditional. So I thought maybe at least it would take a week per painting, probably two weeks per painting. Now, that all happened in my head. Then I asked out loud, when would you like these by? To which Name Redacted answers, 30 days. And I remember sitting right there in the meeting at that moment, thinking to myself for the first time, oh, maybe I can't do that. Not that I was incapable of doing the work itself, but 12 traditional paintings finished paintings in 30 days while juggling all the other clients I had on the go at that moment just seemed like an awful lot. And I felt a pang in my stomach that was telling me that. But because of who the client was, I thought this is that like fairy tale big break moment that everyone is always waiting for. So I suppressed all of my very real and very logical concerns and replaced those with the words, yeah, I can do it. And of course, everyone was happy and I got in the car and drove home. I still hadn't quoted them a price, but uh, they said, just come up with a price and email us. So I remember driving home that nervousness that started in the meeting when I found out the details of the project, uh, that nervousness had not gone away. And I remember kind of justifying it as like, this is just how it feels when a huge opportunity comes and, you know, you you have a bit of self-doubt. You're not sure if you can do it, but but you'll step up to the plate. You've always done that in the past um, and this will be no exception. And because the client is so big, it'll be even more of a reason to step up to the plate. So I got home. I told my wife all this stuff that happened and and, um, you know, she I think I, th I remember her asking me, like, so you you can do it, right? You, you can do this. And I said, yeah, I can do it. I just, you know, I'll have to pull all nighters for 30 days. It's going to be hell, but I can do it. And together we somehow concocted a, a fee, a, a quote that I could email them. Uh, it was very high, partly because of the high profile nature of the job, but also that fast turnaround is going to demand a higher fee. So I emailed that figure to Name Redacted's business manager. They wrote me back instantly, accepting it, no problems. They wrote up a contract for me, and we agreed I would be paid in three installments, uh, the first of which would happen immediately. And sure enough, within hours of signing the contract, I had a wire transfer sitting in my account, and this job was official, and I was scared. <laughs> And again, not scared that I couldn't do the work, but scared that I had just entered into an agreement whose parameters I could not fulfill. However, I reminded myself that Name Redacted had handpicked me for this project. I mean, it wasn't random. And that counts for a lot. I mean, Name Redacted has probably worked with thousands of artists in past films and projects. So the fact that I was chosen probably meant that on an art direction level, that I was a right natural fit and things would flow fairly smoothly as a result. That thought was kind of like my saving grace. It was the one thing that set my mind more or less at ease. 
So the next thing I did was I went on a shopping spree. I went to the local art store and just stocked up on all the tools and materials I would need for this job. And that was a lot of fun. And I stayed up late that night reading through the script again and again, doing little sketches of characters and environments. And then over the next couple of days, I developed those sketches into just something a little more refined that I could show name redacted and maybe get approval into going into the first of 12 paintings. I mean, that process, there was no time to waste. We needed to start now. But I had a good selection of art to show and I felt pretty good about it. So I fired up an email, sent my art, and it was late, so I went to bed. And the next morning, I woke up to a reply sitting in my inbox. And you remember at the beginning of the story how short Name Redacted's emails were? They were like they were just one lines. Well, uh, this was another one line email. And to quickly paraphrase it, it basically said, the art is too cartoony and not the right style. It looks like the characters aren't reflective of the characters in the story, and I need something more realistic. And that was it. That was the email. Let me take a quick aside here and say that uh, one of the main differences between being a freelancer and being hired, you know, full time in a studio is that studios usually have in-house art directors, you know, somebody sitting near you that you can show your work to. And that person can say, you know, steer it in this direction, steer it in this direction. Usually projects have like a style guide. As a freelancer, we really rely on our clients to be that critical part of the communication process. I mean, the main job of a freelancer is to like go inside the client's mind and pull out the pictures that they see. And I thought that because Name Redacted is a famous Hollywood director, that just by nature, very clear art direction would come with that. Actually, I thought that my work would naturally be a good fit. And then from there, there would be art direction to, you know, to really hone in on the final. But this email indicated the complete opposite of that. Name Redacted had essentially only told me that what I had done was wrong, essentially, and I had no direction from there. I mean, I don't mind being told that I'm wrong, but I need some very clear guidance to know where to go from there. Visuals, if possible. This email didn't really give me much other than the word realistic. Name Redacted wanted something more realistic. And I kind of froze there in my chair in front of my computer monitor reading that because now I had just, first of all, lost two days of work. Name Redacted had dismissed my work wholesale, did not even make one comment on one picture, just dismissed all of it and left me with this nebulous idea of things needing to be more realistic. But what was even more devastating, the whole notion of my work being a natural good fit for this project, that was gone because all of my work had been dismissed. So now I'm staring in the face of gargantuan deadlines, not being sure of the art direction of the whole project and calling into question whether or not what Name Redacted sees in my art is the same thing that I see in my art. And that last thought was something very unsettling and new. And I didn't quite know how to grapple with that feeling. So I simply replied to the email. I did not ask any questions. I just said, thanks for the direction. I will reply with a new batch of drawings in a day or so. Um, and that's what I did. I, I remember talking to my wife and, you know, just kind of agreeing that, OK, uh, got off on the wrong foot. But obviously there's something in my portfolio that Name Redacted sees as a good fit. So I'll just try again. So I spend another day drawing more stuff from scratch, revisiting all the characters kind of with a new aesthetic that makes sense to me as being more realistic, less cartoony. And once that batch was done, I sent off another email and essentially got the same reply. It was another one liner that said, still too cartoony, need to go more realistic. And this time Name Redacted had given me some actors names to like model the characters after. So at this point, about four days had gone by and we're still sitting at a stage of figuring out, you know, how to draw this thing. Creatively, all of my momentum had been stalled. Uh, my client wasn't exactly spending a lot of time to communicate with me. And all these hard realities came crashing down like I had signed a contract. They had paid the first installment. I had promised a delivery for such and such a day. You know, obviously, this is a high profile project. My name would be on this like this is not to mention building a reputation with some big name people. This is just not good. <laughs> and uh, I remember talking to my wife then with with the idea that 
maybe I had bitten off more than I can chew. Like maybe this is, maybe I had made a mistake here. Now, my wife is incredibly supportive and she had not lost an inch of faith in, in me for this project. So she was building me up saying like, no, 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 you, you, you can do it. Just take the time you need. I'll take care of everything else. Um, I know you can nail it. Just, just go ahead and give it one more try. So I spent another day or maybe even two days just really trying to search for whatever style I thought was what was being asked for. Because again, I didn't have clear, I didn't have a single visual. Um, it was all just text. And like, like, you know, it wasn't much text, just a few lines of email. Um, and now I, I didn't even trust my instincts anymore because they had proven to be incorrect so far. So uh, I, I did some sketches. I, this part is actually kind of a blur because just underlying all of my work for that day or so was uh, the feeling of inadequacy, basically, that anything I did was kind of doomed to fail. And honestly, I think the third batch of sketches was probably my worst batch because I I no longer believed in it. Um, not the story. I didn't believe in my own work, essentially. And that is a horrible place to be as an artist. That is a death sentence. It's creative poison. It's like in Stranger Things season two, when the vines are running underneath all those fields, killing all the pumpkins and killing all the trees. That's what it felt my art was like. That's like my art was, was those pumpkins getting killed by something running underneath this, the whole thing. Anyway, yeah, shout out to Stranger Things. I love that show. So I submitted the art via email. And this time I did not get a reply from Name Redacted. I got a reply from the business manager. And the business manager attached a revised contract, essentially saying, we've added a stipulation that there is a trial period. And should the trial period not be met successfully, essentially, you know, we can terminate the contract. Obviously, it doesn't take a genius to to understand that they are legally setting themselves up to let me go. So I, I was OK with it. Obviously, I signed whatever I had to sign. And um, I promised uh, I promised one another batch of sketches. Um, you know, I'd, I'd try like a cover sketch or something like that. And I remember sitting down with my wife at that point saying, like, you know, this gut feeling I have is not only overwhelming, but it's proven to be you know, reflected on both sides. And I promised them another delivery of art. So I'm going to be true to my word. But if it doesn't work, I guess maybe it's the honest thing to do to just ask for my own termination here. But I didn't even know if that was a, the correct business move. Now, my, my wife is a, is a business person. She's amazing. Um, and I asked her, I'm like, is that acceptable? Like, can I do that? I mean, it was just five or six days ago that I signed the contract saying I could do it. And now I'm saying that I can't like, is that even something that people can do? Uh, would that drag my name through the mud or or should I just let them terminate me? And my wife, I think, understood where I was coming from. And um, it was a tough decision, to be sure. So I think what we ended on is I should just, hold, you know, do what I said I would do, which is deliver more art. And if they saw fit to end the contract, then it should be their call to end it. So that's what I went ahead with. So I do a whole new drawing, I send it in, and sure enough, I get an email a few hours later from Name Redacted, and it was actually a very nice email. Uh, essentially, it said, Dear Marco, you are a very good artist. It's just that I simply feel I need to move in another direction with this project. Um, I hope we can collaborate in the future, but I believe at this stage we should part ways for now. I apologize for this, but I'm very happy to have met you, and you are now in my roster of artists to collaborate with in the future. Signed, name redacted. So I had been fired. And uh, actually, it's kind of funny because uh, the email firing me was not only Name Redacted's longest email, but also by far the one with the clearest and most eloquent communication. And then that was followed up by a termination agreement from the business manager. Um, actually, you know, my reaction when I got these two emails, I was actually in the process of uh, drawing something for that project. I was so relieved to have been let go from this project that I just chucked the pencil across the room and just just breathed a honest sigh of relief. The feeling of being released from a project that fundamentally was not working for neither party just felt so much better than the idea of pulling all nighters for 30 days on something that would be a struggle every minute of every day. And I'm being honest about that. You know, this it's I'm years removed from this story. And to this day, I feel like the right decision was reached. And I have never been so happy to have been fired. Well, that's actually the only time I've ever been fired. But um, 
it was a very high profile firing and I learned a few things from this. Now let's do a little reflection here. The first thing that I would never do to myself now is put myself in a position where I could not deliver quality art. And there's a few factors that go into that. Number one, the most important thing is being the right fit for the job. Yes, as a freelance artist, I certainly can straddle different styles, but I've learned that it's best when someone hires you for what your specialty is. I'm not, a, I have not directed my career, and this is a personal choice, but I have not directed my career to be a jack of all trades. I can do a few different things, but I have guided most of my attention into funneled it into one thing. And if you go to my website, it'll be very clear what that thing is. I mean, I can paint different subjects. That's not what I'm talking about. But the the voice that my art has, I have spent years refining it, editing it and directing it. So it it all kind of has a unified voice. And if a client is not looking for that and yet still reaches out to me, I will turn that job down because it's not worth either of our time to try for something that doesn't have the right fit. Now, this is something that I've been accused of being very artsy about. And I, I, I imagine that uh, actually a lot of my friends are business people. And I remember talking to my friend about this, this very story. And he, he kind of jokingly said, Marco, you, you messed up, man. You should have just sold your soul and did it. And I had to, and it was, it's funny. I mean, that's kind of funny. And I get where that kind of sentiment comes from, but I think that anyone who makes the decision to make their living off of their own creativity is entering into a fundamentally different kind of arrangement than, say, a business person. And I'm not trying to disparage business people at all, but creativity demands that you be true to who you are. And I know the more it's actually kind of ironic, the more experience I get as an artist, the more growth I have as an artist, the less I'm able to stretch too far. I remember the beginning of my career, I tried to be kind of a jack of all trades and I I would try and like be able to do this style, then jump to that style, then jump to that style. And while I still am able to do that to a degree, I've kind of put a cap on how far I'm willing to stretch because past a certain point, it's just not me anymore. And if I am building my reputation and trading off of my name and my own creativity, then A big part of your career planning is choosing the right jobs that are going to build you in the right way. And while Name Redacted certainly had a high profile job, which completely got me all excited, it had the unfortunate effect of blinding me to the other side of that equation. And that's completely my fault. I hope that no one hears this story and thinks that I'm blaming Name Redacted. No, everything that happened in this this story is my own doing. I did everything to myself. And it was mostly the result of me making some very inexperienced and let's say amateurish decisions. I allowed myself to get over enamored by the client and the project and as a result ignored some of my own basic artistic needs. In fact, the moment I got that very first email back from Name Redacted, the one that dismissed all of my first efforts, what I would have done now is asked Name Redacted to please provide any visuals, either from my portfolio or artwork that um, they like. It's just something to give me an example of something that resonates with them. Because artists are in the business of capturing feelings. And when it comes to feelings, examples of, of art that already does that is invaluable. Now, while yes, Name Redacted did own two of my books and like the work, that isn't specific enough. Um, I need now to have a conversation about specifically what it is about certain pieces of art that resonate with the person and the project. And I've been quite pleased to find out that most clients, actually probably all clients that I've had to deal with, are very willing to have that conversation. Even if I'm the one who has to prompt it, they're always kind of delighted to be part of that creative vision crafting. And as kind of a happy side effect of that process, it builds kind of a conversational rapport with a new client that is actually something that's valuable to carry out through the entire creative process. And the more friendly you are with someone, chances are they'll hire you again. So a conversation like that works on so many different levels. Anyway, getting back to specific art examples, I always now ask a client before any contracts are signed or drawn up, I always ask for... Uh, if possible, samples from my own portfolio, from my website, that are closest to the direction of the project, that are closest to the vision. And um, it can be anything. It can be subject matter. It can be the, the kind of brush strokes, the kind of colors, just something that resonates with them that they can send me. 
Then from there, I have a critical piece of information that gives me insight as to what they respond to emotionally, which again is what art is all about. And I work from that thread. So simply being hired to draw something because I happen to be an artist is not enough for me anymore. I need more information to make sure that I'm actually the right artist for the job. And that is a call that I reserve the right to make. Like a lot of clients will say, oh, you're so perfect for this job. Well, I always ignore that. It That's up to me to decide because the client has no idea how I feel about things. Um, how can they? They might look at my art and say, oh, Marco has done X and Y, therefore would be great for Z. But again, that's that's my decision. So I will always reserve the right to make that call, you know, silently to myself and then act accordingly. And of course, the next thing that it was completely irresponsible of me to do is accept a, a high profile job like that with such an unrealistic deadline. Things are negotiable. That's another point that's important. Um, and, and this relates to what I said at the beginning of the video where a lot of artists are not good business people. Business people, one of the skills that I've noticed they have is they're very good at negotiating and they're good at separating like a personal emotional stake from the business side. Um, and for some reason, I guess I'll just speak for myself, but negotiating always feels like I'm arguing or like I'm being too personal about something. I've learned now that that's not the case. You should negotiate on any level you need to. Uh, it could be a budgetary thing, like a money thing, or it could be a timeline thing. And um, I actually find that the combination of a good timeline with a good project is actually more appealing to me than a good paycheck. Now, obviously, money is important too, but I will. I have taken jobs that don't pay as much, but the art they want from me is just so up my alley or maybe challenging in a way that I think is really going to be good for my growth with a deadline that is not going to kill me, um, that that is worth a lot to me because at the end of the day, we got to be sane about this. Like we have to keep our sanity and nothing will stress you out more than crazy deadlines. And, um, one thing I've learned is that a paycheck doesn't alleviate that. Like, a, you know, getting paid a lot of money for something is not going to erase any kind of stress that you have to go through. And, um, you know, you have to weigh that in somewhere along the line. I decided that being successful is not just a monetary thing, but it's having some money while being happy. And, um, those two are not often from the same cause, I guess. And um, I'm always trying to balance that with the jobs that I take. Now, with more experience, you cultivate more clients and you cultivate uh, more on target kind of jobs. So I'm not saying if you're someone who's just starting out as a freelancer, you probably won't have the luxury of picking and choosing. And there will be times when you have to do the old cutting your teeth thing and maybe doing some jobs that uh, are too hard pressed in terms of deadline and stuff like that. Like we've all been there and I think that is part of the process, but it's also part of the process to actually get over that hump and build your name to a point and build your skills to a point where you can actually have some leverage in the matter. Because if you can get to a point where a client wants you for what you do, that means that you are indispensable and not only does that give you leverage in terms of negotiating, but it means you've really done something right in uh, building your own image and presenting it to the world. And my final point on this whole thing is, uh, remember earlier in the story, I said I had felt like this moment was like that fairy tale um, opportunity that comes knocking once in a lifetime kind of thing. I don't really subscribe to that anymore. Uh, I think fairy tale stories like that are a bit oversimplified, let's say. And I've found that, uh, like I said, this, this story happened to me years ago. And uh, since then, I found that just the sheer act of being a professional and consistently outputting good work um, will build your reputation to a point where big projects like this uh, come knocking all the time. Um, I, I get contacted by big studios all the time. And that's not, please, that's not me trying to brag. It's just me saying that professionalism breeds clients in this case. And um, your work will be in demand from everyone from, you know, small little startup companies all the way up to the big household names that studios we all recognize. I guess what I'm trying to say is there aren't really any dream jobs. That, that doesn't really exist. There's no difference between one client and the next. They both want you uh, for your artistic ability and... There is no difference in quality from a Disney project to uh, a project from some publisher that's like a mom and pop shop. 
if it's the right fit, it's the right fit. They both want your best. And I guess I just want to say again that you shouldn't be in this for the status of your clients. You should be in this for yourself and to build your own art and your own voice to a place where in 20 years from now or 50 years from now, you can really feel good about it. The luster that comes with working on some big name project for a film studio like Disney, for example, it's cool, but it fades. But what doesn't fade is how your art resonates with people. And really, that's all to do with you and not the client. Anyway, um, here's some close ups of the finished little uh, Halloween painting I did during the story. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Hope you enjoyed the story as well. I hope there were some kind of takeaways for you. If there's any kind of topics you guys would like me to cover on a future installment of these art talk videos, just put them in the comments. Let me know, because sometimes it's a, I have a hard time deciding what's important when it comes to you know personal experience and advice and stuff. Lastly, I'd like to thank all my patrons that have graciously supported this channel for the past few months. Um, if you would also like to support, here's the link here. I would be flattered to have you a part of the community. I do my best to provide some behind the scenes content on my Patreon page, as well as cool rewards that come on each tier level. So check that out if you're so inclined. So happy Halloween once again, stay safe out there, and I will see you in the next video.